In this movie, you'll use Tinkerplot's features to generate a sample space for rolling two dice. That will involve using the counter device, so let's look at how that works. Here is a mixer filled with the digits 0 through 9. Let's sample from it 10 times. In theory, it would be possible to get each digit exactly once, but in fact, that's very unlikely. You will almost always get some repeated numbers and some numbers that do not get drawn. This is because the mixer is randomly sampling numbers with replacement from the digits. To draw the digits out in order, replace the mixer with a counter. The counter has the same elements, 0 to 9. But now, when you click Run, you draw the digits out in order to get a complete and ordered set of outcomes. Add another counter to the right of this one and again fill it with the digits 0 through 9. Then increase the number of repeats to 100. Now when you run the sampler, the right counter cycles through the digits 0 through 9 in order while the left counter stays on 0. Once the right counter has cycled through all of the elements once, the left counter rotates to the next digit. It continues this way until it draws out 100 outcomes. While you watch this, you will notice that this is how a car odometer works in keeping track of your total mileage. It can also be used to model our number system. Let's use this idea to generate a sample space. Here is a sampler built to simulate rolling two dice. With the spinners, you get random outcomes like you do with real dice. So here's the outcome 1, 1, and now the outcome 4, 1, and so on. How many possible outcomes are there for rolling two dice? To answer this, we'll use counters to generate the sample space. Replace each mixer with a counter. Each counter now has the numbers 1 through 6. Run the sampler to generate the outcome systematically. As you run the sampler, notice again that the right counter cycles through the values 1 through 6, while the left counter stays on 1. Then, the left counter advances to 2, and the right counter cycles through 1 through 6 again, and so on. Let's draw them all out. The sampler is set to repeat 30 times, so let's look at the 30 outcomes. It stopped at the outcome 5, 6, so it didn't go long enough for die A to get to the 6s. We can also see this in a graph. Let's run the sampler again to see how this graph works. As we start over, we first have die A set at 1, so die B goes through all six values. Then die A is set at 2, while die B goes through all six values, and so on. When we get all the way through, we don't get to the column of 6's, where die A goes to 6, so we are short 6 outcomes. Let's see what happens when we change the number of repeats from 30 to 36. We should now get all these slots filled up. 
and we do. Let's look again at our data table. The data table now holds all possible outcomes of rolling two dice. Pull out another plot. It contains the 36 possible outcomes. Let's make a graph showing the sums of the two dice. Fully separate the values and stack them up. Turn on N to show the total number of possible outcomes. Notice that there is only one way to get a sum of 12, 6, 6. But there are two ways to get an 11, 5, 6, and 6, 5. Using this sample space, we can calculate theoretical probabilities. So the probability of a sum of 11 is 2 out of 36. There are six different outcomes that give us a sum of 7. So the theoretical probability of a sum of 7 is 6 out of 36, or 1 sixth. You can also use this sampler to model rolling three dice by adding a third counter.